Let's do this thing. What's up, everybody? Colin, happy holidays to you, my friend. JG Maker R1, not a ton of buzz about this printer. Uh, not a ton of buzz about JG Maker in general. Um, if you don't know anything about this 3D printer, let me spin it around so you don't see all my particular, oh, you can see it right here. So it's gonna be a bed slinger style 3D printer. The bed's gonna move front to back, X and Y axis. The Z axis is obviously gonna be the gantry moving up. I don't wanna call it old school, but we're seeing less and less bed slingers nowadays. Nowadays, Core XY is uh, sort of the biggest thing. Uh, as you can see, the King Room KLP1 right behind me, which is video I'm doing very shortly, actually like right now, basically. Um, but might be some cool things in this box. We're gonna see if we can throw a clipper onto this thing. I did a little bit of research. It has an STM32 chip. Uh, I think it's a MKS Nano Pro board. We're gonna find out though. Uh, we're gonna have fun with it. Um, I'm not in New Jersey, I'm in New York, which is close enough. Uh, it's cold right now, man. It's been like on and off cold, some rain here and there, but uh, it broke off today, it's pretty cold. No snow yet, we got a little bit of flurry action. Uh, anything. All right, so the unboxing, I already, I already cut it open. I wanted to save everyone the embarrassment of me trying to cut this thing open. Um, we'll do the unboxing as per our usual. Scan the code, join the Facebook group, I suppose. Um, this should be a very simple unboxing like the rest of uh, the past have been because this is like a three-piece assembly, which is all, obviously nowadays a lot of what they're doing, which is great. Uh, box of goodies, we're gonna assume this is the clippers and the screws and all the different things we may need. Uh, power cable, screen mount, uh, filament holder probably, right? Top mounted filament holder and a filament runout sensor. So this printer has like all the bells and whistles you would want nowadays on a bed slinger. It's uh, direct extrusion, filament runout, filament runout sensor, very simple uh, setup, dual stepper, so that means it's dual Z driven. So it's, uh, it might not be something we're used to hearing about or used to seeing, but this printer has a lot going on for it. We got a little bit 250 grams of orange JG Maker PLA. Does it tell me? Yeah, PLA, that's cool. It's a nice little color, orange is my favorite color. It almost matches my shirt. Uh, can we see what's in this box a little better? I got this awesome new I think I might be a little better at this by now, but you'd be surprised. Okay, screen right here, chunky screen. I usually never take that off, I'm kind of upset now. So chunky screen, uh, we use clipper around here, so we're not used to screens, but that's cool. We don't mind them. All right, let's see. And out of the box, it's relatively light, which is cool. It's not like the last stream where I had to get that T500 out and then I was uh, out of commission for like three days, because my body hurt. That was cool, but well, that wasn't cool. All right, packaged nicely, a lot of nice foam. I mean, that's kind of common. Good, they're not shooing any of that. So here we have the uprights. Wait, this has to come up. We got to bring this up. All right, so here we go, upright. So it's funny, we noticed on the last stream, like everyone's doing away with that 2020 extrusion or the, at least the exposed extrusion. And JG Maker is following the same line. You no longer see that exposed extrusion right up along here. They put some cool computerized design, I guess here, and it's completely flat. Same thing goes with the X axis right here, straight across, completely fat, uh, flat. Belt tensioner on this side. Everything's still running on wheels and a belt. There's not linear rails or anything like that. Really chunky extruder head. Kind of a cool design, kind of a cool logo. Uh, orange wheel, I like. Super, super chunky uh, extruder tensioner. The hot end itself is loose. We'll fix that. There should be a concentric nut at the bottom here. Looks like we're gonna have like a 20 something pin cable that goes in here. End stop, 
normal sort of bed slinger style stuff. So here, let's take a look at the back. So you'll notice we do have dual stepper drivers, uh, dual stepper motors rather, and two screws. Is this desktop audio way too high? I can hear it myself. That might be too loud for you. Um, so it's interesting. They have two motors, two screws, and also a timing belt to synchronize them. In general, you have one or the other. At least that's what I've seen. I don't know the reason to synchronize this with a belt if you're also giving the same current to the motors, unless we have dual stepper drivers. But even then, I think that's even more wrong. We'll find out. Interesting, though. Take some of this styrofoam off. Uh, everything looks clean. They're dry, so we're going to have to lube these up. Not lubricated from the factory. It's just good to know. We can look at the back of this hot end. Get this thing off. So this appears to be, just from looking at it, a gigantic heat sink. Uh, we'll open it up later. Normal size heat block, MK8 style nozzle. Might have a th screw in thermistor. A few other things going on. Not quite sure what this little guy over here is doing. Find out. Oh wait, that must be an inductive probe. I know it has probing and I don't see a probe. That probably should be the first giveaway, right? So this has auto bed leveling or bed probing, I should say. I don't like using that term anymore. What's up, Cuddy? What's up, Ed? Yeah, don't, I'm half paying attention to don't worry. I appreciate you just hanging out. But we're gonna, we're gonna find out. So this, this is a 3D printer that is Marlin based. There's no clipper profile. We're gonna see if we can flash it today though uh, and get this thing running real fast. But we'll, we'll, we'll take it step by step. Um, so this is the probe, must be an inductive probe right here or something. That's kind of weird. We'll open it up, take a look. Let's get the heat sock back on. Okay. Top gantry. Get it out of here. It's lightweight. That's cool. Now we have the bed. Bed's heavier. What do you expect? I mean, it should be a little heavy. So this appears to be Double-sided PEI, which is nice. It's better than those PC beds that like the Enders give. We saw those a few weeks ago. The pet is stable in place, unlike that Creality one that we saw again a few weeks ago when it was completely off the rails, quite literally. Is this gonna, oh, a small little end stop back here. Everything else looks fine. Power supply is right down here at the bottom. Uh, it even has a half a belt tensioner up front, it looks like it cracked. Right here, uh, we probably can print a replacement, but it's a little knob to help us tension the Y axis belt. There's a, a little draw in the front. Always good, store stuff in. The Ender 3 V2 is the first one I remember that had that, and it was surprisingly convenient. So that is, that's the unboxing. Long cable next to it. I think this is gonna go together ra rather quickly which is good for us, or good for me, I guess. And then we get to mess around with it. I didn't download a slicer or anything. Probably should have. Okay. So let's what's inside this bag. All right. You know, Ed, I'm trying to push these streams a little later because I know I got that uh, West Coast connection. So I apologize if you're still at work or something, but thank you for thank you for tuning in. And Colin, I don't think I know what time it is over there, even though you have told me last time. All right, opening the bag. Assuming this is gonna be all the stuff we need to put it together. I don't see instructions in here. Oh, we got a fancy uh, 3D leveling card. Love, love to see that. Do like to see it. Okay. Allen keys. Uh, extra MK8 brass nozzle. Doesn't tell us what size it is. I would assume it's 0 0.4. Screws, screws, and screws. Ebenezer screws. More screws. Oh, Florida? 
Oh, Colin, why was I thinking you were across the pond? More screws. Yeah, Florida. Oh my God, my wife's in Florida right now. She's, it's, what is it, like 80 degrees down there? I guess maybe depending on where you're at. We finally have filament cutters. I don't have a pair of these, actually, at all. Line. I have a million of these. Um, if anyone wants them, give them away. Glue stick. Uh, yeah, not necessarily needed for a PEI bed, but if we want to print PETG or ABS, which we probably can't on an unenclosed printer like this, we want to use this as a release agent. Uh, what is this? This is filament, but I've never, is it cleaning filament or something? Not really sure. Smells like normal filament. Uh, pretty cool. Gigantic SD adapter drive. We're seeing more of these like unique SD style adapters to USB. Uh, this is a cool one. 60? Yeah, 60's cold for you guys, I know that. 60 would be nice right now. It's probably in the low 40s for me, I would think. But it just, it feels, it feels colder than that. I just stepped outside to get my mail right before this and I was freezing. Uh, Non-printed 3D uh, removal spatula. Don't need a removal spatula with a PEI bed. So I don't know why they gave it, which is fine. I mean, it's cool. And I don't know why they didn't print it themselves. That's kind of uh, odd. And then we have a USB to, I forgot what this kind of cable is called, but it's chunky boy cable. Um, which I'm assuming that's what this has on the side. Um, documents, warranty, okay. And a, no, oh, two warranty cards. So no instructions to put this together. That's strange. Um, because one of the big features of this printer is the fact that it is, re it goes together very quickly and very simply. Uh, I see an optical switch right here. So there should be some, I'm sure I can find it online, but I guess we'll just make this work. I wish there was some sort of instruction here though. I've never done this before. Power input, okay, so it tells me to adjust the power input. Oh no, warning, power input 110. So I don't know if I have to adjust it or not, my voltage. All right, I'm already adjusted, so always make sure that the voltage is, cor is correct uh, whenever you're setting up these printers. Obviously for me, it's not the worst. I'm 115 volts. If it was set to 230, I just wouldn't be giving it enough juice. If you are overseas, if you're in Australia, I think who had the problem recently, uh, Krampus with his T500. Um, if he gets the voltage wrong, that's a problem because he's sucking in 230 to a 115, that's no good. Either way, just make sure your voltage is correct, please, people. Be safe out there. West Virginia, West, what do you, what's the temperature at in West Virginia? Is it similar to New York right now? It's gotta be, right? It's gotta be not that hospitable. That being, I mean, I used to like not mind the cold as I was younger. The older I get, the less I like the cold. Like, I, I, I'm not that unequipped to it. I just, I don't want to deal with it. Jack, what do I want to look at the SD card? You want to see it again? This wacky SD card? It's pretty cool. So it looks like a key fob. Uh, one side, USB-A to plug in. Other side, micro, uh, not micro USB, uh, large SD adapter. Oh my God, it's a nesting doll. And then the small SD in there, we love it. So any, uh, any way you want to get information out to here, you can do it. Micro SD, large SD, and then we go right into the USB. So the Creality one was similar. Oh, it was not similar. It was unique like this too. It was like a 90 degree angle. It almost looked like uh, some sort of ship. I can never get these large SD cards back in. I always put them in the wrong way every time. Uh, this will be used, obviously, to get prints from our 3D printer, or from our computer, to our 3D printer. This is Marlin. We don't have Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so we'll be using this SD to SD to USB card. Oh, the instruction might be on? Oh, you're absolutely right. They probably are on this. Um, we ain't gonna look at it. <laughs> just because I don't know how to look at it on here while still doing the streaming thing. So I'm just gonna make it work. But you're right, we'll look at this afterwards just to see if they have them for people who might buy this printer. I have a feeling it's gonna be so darn easy, we're not gonna need them. I mean, I only have a few sets of screws here. All right, you know what? Maybe we should look it up. Now, if I plug this in, will something bad happen to my computer? Ugh, I'm a little worried. You know what? We're gonna to go to the Google. I don't wanna plug this in and jar any wires.
document support. Yeah, so the website has all the guides we may need. I have a simple setup guide right now. I really just want to know what uh, screws go in where. Even though I should probably know all this stuff already. The large here. Four M5 by 45 to fix the base. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get hacked if I plug it in, but I don't know that I won't get hacked. Uh, all right, M5 by 45s. These are these are the larger screws. The uh, if you want to call them heavier or thicker screws. These are always what's going to plug uh, connect our base to the rest of our printer. So with a printer like this, we're going to turn it on its side. Well, no, I'm not actually. I'm going to get under it, but I'm just looking. Uh, do you all want to see the main board real quick? I kind of want to. Never do what I'm doing. We're just doing it for demonstration purposes only. All right. Oh no, we're not using. We're using actual Phillips head screws, which is just not what I'm used to. I can hear that electronic music playing. It's loud. Um. Yeah. So JG Maker. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I. You don't hear a lot about them. I think the last time I heard of JG Maker, it was an IDEX machine. Um, I was in the middle of two IDEX machines. Um, and JG Maker was offering uh, an IDEX. And IDEX is uh, independent dual extrusion. That means two print heads printing at the same time or independently of one another at some point. Uh, so they definitely, they were in that market. I know they had Ender 3 style uh, printers as well. I just, I never stumbled upon, I just never got one. So I don't know a lot about them, but I know they're out there. Uh, they contacted me, which is very nice of them. And they offered to, Furnish me with this 3D printer free of charge as long as I streamed it. So this is it. This is the stream. Uh, that was very nice of them. Uh, they were really nice to deal with. So I hope this printer works out. Super nice people. And the printer came without any issues. Um, receptive to any feedback I had. Not that I really had any yet. Just a few questions here and there. And that's about it. So JG Maker. I've never owned a printer from them before. So this is a first. Uh, everything looks pretty okay so far, and when I say pretty okay, I don't mean that to be like an admon like admonishment. It's just you know, everything's where it should be as of right now. And sure, looks like they've kind of compartmentalized. That's like my new favorite word. Uh, the bottom of this 3D printer, which works well for us. This side here, as you can see, is the. Let me bring this down now. Looks to be the main board. And the other side looks to be the power supply. So instead of opening up the entire thing, I'm pretty sure I could just open up this little side here, which is half Phillips head, uh, half hex, and we can take a look at exactly what we have under here. All right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, pretty cool. So, not a lot of space. We've been used to a lot of space. Here's our, let's get this a little closer for y'all. Hit you with the light. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, so, the last couple 3D printers we looked at, they had a lot of space under there. Especially the, uh, the King Room's got a ton of space, which is behind me. And the Ender 3 had a ton of space. Uh, not a lot of space here. Not that it's a big deal. But, you know, less space, of course, is going to mean less airflow. So here's our board, as best you can see it. Heat sink, heat sink, heat sink. What does it say on the board? Any markings? Well, there's a ton of glue all over it. I don't, I don't really appreciate that. This says JG Maker stamped on here. I'm assuming this is an MKS uh, Robin Nano from the Marlin firmware they had available online. I don't know though. Uh, we got a fan that's like sort of blowing onto the stepper drivers. Looks like it actually is, so that's cool. Uh, it's a chunky fan, what is this? This is like a 40-40 or so. I don't know what size that is. Uh, but it's bigger than average. All the 
terminal connectors right here, if you can see, are all ferruled. So that's good to see. Yeah, uh, we like to see that stuff. What chip? SCM32 F103 ZET6. I'm used, well, that's, I believe that's an older chip, but I can't be certain. It's an SCM32. That's all we really need to know. Everything looks fine. Uh, cabling is concise right in here. A little bent. Tons of glue. Don't like that, but whatever. It's a, it's a main board. Everything looks pretty okay. They really went crazy with the glue, though. How dare they? Give me a second. My wife is getting on a flight. I must wish her well. All right, bag this thing back up. Let's see if we can get it together. So yeah, again, pretty cool that it's kind of compartmentalized. We don't have to take everything off in order to get to it. How old, how old did this go on? The real question. Okay. So these outer guys or girls were hexed. So the whole plan for this stream, I think, is I, what I'd like to do is, you know, the JG Maker, when I first saw this printer, it looks like an Ender 3 Pro clone, which in 2023 or soon to be 2024, I don't know that that's safe. And by Ender 3 Pro, I don't really mean, I mean, it's a little more advanced than that because it has uh, dual Z axis and stuff like this. But it's basically an old school Ender clone. This is a printer that would have looked like a hot commodity a year and a half ago, especially at this price range. But right now, it doesn't seem like it has a foothold anywhere. So I was a little worried about it, not really sure where it sits or what it's going to be doing. That being said, all the specs on this thing look really nice. The packaging so far has looked nice. It's a little unique in certain ways. It has some nice uh, branding on like those front rails that we saw earlier. The really important thing that I'm worried about, or not worried about, interested in, is can this run Clipper? I mean, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, I know, but this being able to run Marlin is great. Um, like I said, I think this was, this was priced at around 200 and something dollars, but I believe Recently, I looked on the website, it's dropped to below $200. So if we can get a below $200 3D printer that is well-specced, that can handle Clipper well, that can run Clipper, that can run it fast, that's not bad. And I kind of like that. This might be one of those newer introductory 3D printers that we can slap Clipper onto, run it real fast, and get some really, really good. Uh, but I don't know. Not every printer is made for every person. Not everyone has to get the same 3D printer. If you don't want to buy a Creality Ender 3, this might be what you want to buy, or you want to buy it for somebody. Either way, it's always good to see what is out there and what's available, and so far this seems perfectly suitable. So now we're going to put the uprights on. We're going to assume that board was a Robin Pro Nano, even though all it said was JG Maker on it. Let me get the uprights. Here again are the uprights, if you didn't see them earlier. We have those markings on the side, big chunky hot end. Now this is the way I do it normally, is I, the one thing I don't like um, that a lot of 3D printers are offering is this is flat uh, base extrusion. So I'm just, I have to just kind of leave it right here and hope it doesn't fall while I do this. Ender 3 V3 SE uh, doesn't have that. A lot, of, a lot of newer printers aren't having, they have slots. We can slot it in, get under it, and then tighten it. It's a lot easier for newer people or for anybody. So that kind of thing I wish was the norm going forward. Uh, but we'll see. That's just a small, it's a small improvement, but it might be a big one for them because it changes the whole way the base has to be set. All right, this is how I like to do this. I hang it over the edge. Now what I'm doing here, I'm not gonna be able to show you that well, unfortunately. I'm hanging the printer over the edge so I can access the, or so I can put the screws, these M5 screws through the extrusion onto this rail. No real easy way of showing you, unfortunately, because I am under the printer on this side. But if you ever have to do this, I would recommend doing it this way. See what's going on here? I have to kind of let go of that top extrusion to switch hands, and I risk dropping it, or it twisting me. All right. 
Now, whenever you're tightening up any of these extrusions, especially if I caught that, if it's the first time, you never want to tighten it fully. We want to get both sets of screws in moderately tight, and then we start tightening it down. So I'm almost done with this side. Yeah, so this is dual Z. This is interesting. So it's dual Z, dual stepper motor, dual stepper motor, dual Z, also timing belt on top. So uh, they just threw everything at the wall on that, I guess, because usually you have one or the other. Usually you have a single Z with a timing belt, which stabilizes both Z rods or Z screws, or you have two motors and two rods and they run themselves. So, oh, I didn't know. I wanted to look if the stepper drivers were independent, if there were two Z stepper drivers. I did not look. That was a mistake on my part. I apologize. We will find out at some point. I probably can find out online maybe with that JG Maker website. All right. All right, this one's going, once you get one side in, it's much easier and much more stable to get in the other sides. So that's exactly what I did. The other sides, the first sides I did were moderately screwed in. Now this one I'm gonna screw in just a little bit tighter. Go back to the other side and do it like that. We wanna do it little by little. Not the most exciting thing to watch. I apologize, but it's probably just the best way to do it, especially for this printer. And this is like most of the setup here. I kind of understand why JG didn't give us instructions. We're basically done. I like that. And when we opened the Creality Ender 3v3 last week, the bed was way off. It was like unusable. This is not that, the case. This bed was the quality control on this so far has been good. Very good. Uh, the price, Colin, I think I answered, I don't know if I answered it in time or not. Uh, it was like 200 and something, but I believe it's 189 now. And I'm sure you might even be able to find it cheaper. Okay. The uprights are on. That's most of it. Should we just take a look at this print head while we have it up right here? Because we're mostly done with the setup. JG was pretty cool about that. Okay, so how do we take this off? So you're gonna notice right here, the hot end is loose. Very common, uh, eccentric nut on the bottom wheel here. Uh, we're just gonna tighten that up. But that's, that's a very common problem. Nothing to really worry about. How the heck do we take this thing off? Okay, screw, screw. So there's a, a series of screws at the back of this. They look like they're in the actual gantry though, not the shroud. There's four screws. Two are connected to this uh, fan mount here, or to this cord mount here, and the other two, I think, are connected to the shroud. We're gonna take them out and find out. I'd like to just get a look at what this hot end looks like. All right, I can see the shroud coming off. I think we picked the right ones. It looks like there's some on the bottom, too. Two more on the bottom. Just want to make sure I'm not un, not loosening anything that shouldn't be. So it looks like a total of four screws that need to be removed to take off this uh, this shroud. Let's get a look at our hot end. That bad. So they're not messing around with this print head. It's uh, it's a big boy. It is heavy. It is a heavy, chunky guy. So here's the issue: the shroud's still on. Um, so we have a breakout board at the back, right here. We're gonna have our couple of fans. How many fans do we have? One, two. So two part cooling fans and the hot end fan is right through there. So that's gonna cool down our heat sink. Just right here. Two cooling fans. Right here is the bed probe, which is entering probably an inductive probe. I'd never actually see one like that, but I didn't really see the inside of a probe. Thermistor wires. 
pretty nice. I mean, it's a nice little bundle. The problem really is that I can't, if I really want to access the insides and look at the internals, I have to disassemble all, disassemble all of this, which I'm really not in the mood to do. So, I guess we're going to save that for another time. There's just a lot of screws going on in here. So, we took a look as best we can. I guess we'll get back to it. What, one thing that I would like to remember is, if you can see the separation between the nozzle and the heat block. Now, that's a good thing. That means it's not pressed up against the heat, uh, the heat break, which is what we want. But it's, there's a lot of gap between the end of the nozzle and the beginning of the heat uh, block. So I, I want to heat this up and tighten that well, when we get a chance. So someone remind me, please, because I'm definitely going to forget. Okay. Guess we'll keep going. Put this bad boy back on. Um, do you want me to weigh this? Do I have my weighing stuff? I think I do. I'm not saying this is the heaviest printhead of all time, but it might be an interesting little number. All right. It is 13.4 ounces, just under a pound. A couple, couple ounces under a pound, so that's not bad at all. So now we can mount it back up. It's a cool little package. Cool little breakout board. After this, we'll finish the installation, which I think is like hooking up the screen and putting this, hooking up the motors and then putting on the filament spool holder. I'm gonna have to download, I suspect, their slicer, which I really don't wanna do. Get a print out of it, and then I wanna see if we can flash clipper onto this. I don't know if we're gonna be successful, uh, but you don't know if you don't ask. music is bothering anybody let me know I don't really know how loud it is in comparison that screw just strip and now let's go ahead and tighten up this eccentric nut while we're down here too all right so, eccentric nut. Two wheels right here that just have uh, guides between the wheel and the rail. This down here has an eccentric nut. Uh, eccentric meaning it does, it's like an oblong circle. The more we rotate it, the closer the wheel comes to the rail. Uh, and then if we keep rotating it, it starts to release itself from the rail. No, I wish it was at Colin. Uh, Colin if this was a quick release print head, that would be something special. Uh, it is not, unfortunately. So, did they give us... Okay. So, this wrench that they... Oh, here we go. Okay. So, if I move it this way just a little bit, I didn't move it a lot, right? You can see how much wiggle. And if I move it back, less, barely any and now no wiggle. So if you ever encounter this, not a lot of movement that you have to make in order to stabilize this. Just make small adjustments as you keep uh, fiddling with that, with that print head until you feel it nice and stable. And now, rock solid. So we can move on to whatever the next step might be. I'm gonna assume it is Place the extruder cable on the fixing buckle and insert the cable into the slot. Uh, fixing buckle is. I suspect it means this cable right here. So it looks like it wants us to connect 
the extruder cable that's dangling down right now, which we'll do. This cable right here. It's a bundle of cables, so it's more than just the extruder. It looks like it might be up to the x-axis, uh, one of the z's back here or something. So here we go. So see a clip here. So this is clipping onto something. I'm not really sure what. Oh, I guess back here. So on the back of the extruder side, the stepper motor side of the x-axis is a little mount for this to mount onto. And then this will get plugged into the extruder. Then these have to go somewhere. Looks like a stepper motor and this optical sensor for the Y. Okay. So let's see what screws we need to use. M4 by 20s. M4 by 20. That seems kind of long, but okay. We'll do it. M4 by 20. This is a nice little uh, mounting way to mount. Four by twenty. Who are they? Who are they fooling here? Oh, does it go around the side of it? No. How does it go? Place the extruder cable on the fixing buckle and insert the cable. I'm not gonna lie to you. You guys are coming. You you guys are coming with me on this one. What do you think this is? See a power cord. Oh, that was it for the last step. Oh my God. Place a spool holder on the gantry. Oh, the spool holder. That's for that. Place extruder cable on fixing buckle. And insert the cable into slot. Okay, uh, these screws are actually for this, so I guess we'll just do that while I have it. So we're going to make this go backwards, right? There are two screw slots up here, so this can't be moved. This is gonna be where it's gonna be. There's a cable up here as well, pink, for the filament runout sensor, ultimately. This is gonna be pretty simple. One, one on this side. This is not a printed part, it looks like uh, injection. Another opportunity to have printed something, JG. Oh, we're missing something. On this one. Okay, we'll keep going. the switch for the filament run out. Use screws to fix it. Which screws? Don't want to tell me. Fair enough. Oh, they, they come with screws. How dare you. Okay, so filament run out is going to get mounted, I guess, right here to this and hang out right here. Obviously, as the filament comes down, it's gonna go directly in. So we need to see which direction it said. Uh, I'm assuming the A goes up. So the A is gonna be up just like it is on the print head. So we can use the screw that it came with and mount it right in here. 
probably an M4, right? A little bigger. Yeah. This is actually pretty cool. There is a threaded slot on both sides, so you could put this on either side. Although I, I get you can't. I guess you can't because the plug for it is on this side, and you will not have enough side. So there you go. Now we have the filament runout sensor installed at the top. So our filament can travel through there and sense if it is still going into the hot end or at least still on the spool. Okay. What do we do after that? Fix the cylinder hole on the spool with the arm M6 by 10. That's really all I need. M5, M3, oops. Don't see M6 by 10. M4 by 20. M6 by 10, here we go. So this is for the rest of the spool holder. Spool holder will sit right here. And how many do we need? Just one, right? With So it looks like there's a single screw in here. Need a little bigger. So it just goes in right like that. Wish I could give you all a better angle of this. It's just not the easiest thing to show. So Here's the end of our spool holder. The screw goes into it to hold it, lock it in place. Lock it in place, but it goes through this. So that's what we're doing right now, I think. Fiddly, not JG Maker's fault. Don't blame them, blame me. I want to get the printed. What worries me is they said use two screws, but it's only a single one. So now we have the filament spool holder on. Took longer than it should have because I'm a dumb dumb. So Randy, someone who's owned a JG Maker, we we've been talking earlier. I never owned one before this, so. Were they any good? Was it a good printer? How long ago did you have it? Because this is the first one I've ever experienced. It looks fine right now. Everything seems to be, you know, perfectly suitable. We're going to find out as we print with it, of course. But uh, besides their IDEX machines, I don't know a lot about them. Okay, so I'm going to put cable in here. I have no clue where this cable goes. All right, there's mini screws here. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know why I'm reading these directions. Okay. We're now putting on the cabling. Hopefully there's only one way. To... So there you go. Neat, neat little package. And now I'm going to fix this, this mount right here. I didn't tell me what screws are, but I can use my process of elimination and assume they're these M3 by three screws. I think that's pretty much all I have left. M3 by three. So this is a cool little way to mount it up and get it out of the way, the cables. These are definitely not the M3 screws. You know, a lot of other printers have tried different ways, pushing in the extrusion. Oh, there's a longer LK4 Pro, LK5 Pro I had, push in the extrusion. Did a few other, other ways to hide or, or to at least uh, traverse the cables. That's a nice little way. It's a cable, some screws, gets the job done. 
going to plug in some of these wires that are here now. Uh, this is to an optical end stop, which looks to be at the bottom right here. And we have, we're missing cable for the extruder, which is right here, or for the stepper motor rather, on the x-axis, which is right here. Z motor needs to get plugged. What is this guy? Did I plug in the wrong one? We're gonna find out. All right, Z motor number one gets plugged in. All the way at the bottom. Is this plugged in? Yes, this optical plus and stuff's plugged in. Z2 needs to get plugged in. Give me a lot more cable for this, thank you. That's plugged in. Power supply is at the right voltage, reminding again. Antiquated, yeah, they're trying. I mean, listen, they're still putting them out. Yeah, no, I try to catch everyone up because people are coming and going. I mean, listen, this is not the most entertaining. I'm just getting new to this, so I'm trying. But if you weren't here, this is the JG Maker. They're trying something again. It's similar to like an Ender 3 style clone. They're, they're throwing all the bells and whistles at the wall. Dual Z, dual stepper motor, direct extruder, filament runout sensor, PEI bed, little tool kit, uh, or a little draw for the toolkit. So, you know, it's, it's hard nowadays, man. The landscape of 3D printing printers that are out there and price range, it's all over the place. I mean, Bamboo Labs shook up the world. That, that's just the long and short of it, really. We don't need any of this jargon. Clean up my workspace a little bit. All righty then. How's this mic doing? Okay. Uh, cable, cable. We did the cable here. Oh yeah, I want to see if I accidentally plugged in the wrong cable. Well, I don't think I did. I just don't know what. Uh... So this is the filament runout cable. What the heck is this cable? Oh, this is the filament runout cable. This is filament runout down here. So this one coming out of the bottom of the extrusion, you can see it, it's filament runout and I have to plug it into this. No clue what this cable is. It's coming up from the main board. I have power to the stepper, power to the filament run out, I have power to my print head. What is this? Oh, here we go. End stop. <laughs> End stop. End stop needs, needs some power. There we go. We found it. We did it, everybody. Thank you all for the help. Good night. I'm joking. Uh, screen, last but not least, get the mount, get the screen. Yeah, <laughs> Jack, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, screen's going to need 5 by 10s Let's see, does it tell me? No, don't really tell me. Oh yeah, M5 by 10, okay. Figure this out. Screen's gonna go. Right here with the M5 by 10s. Of which I'll be putting in two of them to save time. Now I might put in more. Yikes. Oh, 
Okay. Number one. Number two. So it looks like we're going to have some extra screws left over. That's very nice, JG Maker. I appreciate that. And I wish these were all magnetic. Only like one of them I have is the M3 one. Most of the time, I use it every time. But every now and then, I don't. And I look like a buffoon. Someone's making money. Okay. Screen mount is mounted. Screen looks like it just snaps right in. Where's the plug? Plug's on this side. Very long cord. Gives us a lot of room to operate. Plug is plugged in. Slides on to mount. That's it. Boom. Booyah. Let's do that again. I'd like for this to hide completely. Or, or one wire is fine. So here you go. Boom. We're set up. Done and done and done. Yeah, I mean, I got a, I got extra screws here, which to be honest, I haven't really, the last few builds we did, I didn't notice any extra parts, which I guess is double-edged sword. Sometimes when people see an extra screw here or there, they're worried they didn't put it in. Uh, but it's also nice to have just in case they roll off the table or something. So I'm going to put all of them together, add it to my pile. We have an extra nozzle here. That should be it. We should be ready to go. This is the JG Maker R1. Pretty cool. I have no complaints so far. We'll get a few in a little bit. So, next issue we're gonna run into, that I'm gonna run into is, uh, I've been using Orca Slicer, basically, in the, oh, that's it, I'm only using Orca Slicer. So I don't have a profile for this. I doubt that there is a JG Maker R1 profile on there. We can create one. I have to assume it's Ender 3 style. Now we could do that, but I think we might download Orca um, JG's, who's mine? JG Slicer, slice it from there and give it the real uh, college experience. Then we'll do our own thing. Let's power this bad boy up. So that went together very quickly. No one can say it didn't. So JG Maker, we give you credit for that. Cable looks, everything looks good. I wish I had looked, paid more attention to if there were two stepper drivers for this Z. I don't think there are. My guess would be there aren't, but I wish I actually paid attention. Also, happy holidays to everybody. I know we're getting into December. There's holidays left, right, and center. We just passed Thanksgiving, if you're living in the United States. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, our voltage is set to 115, which is what we need. Everything's hooked up, appears to be. Uh, let's give it the old turn on. Not that one. So very important when you're turning on a 3D printer, make sure the power source that you're plugged into also turned on. Let's give it a turn on. I can hear it. It appears to be alive. Sorry again about this. I guess we're just staying right there. Okay. Okay. Everything is in Chinese. Not the best start.
So, I mean, we can kind of assume what's going on here. If I go to these gears, uh, maybe the globe, English, back. We did it. So disable motors, a little bit about, give us uh, what board, universal board, firmware that's currently using, fans, turn them on, turn them off, machine parameters, machine settings, acceleration settings, oh, it's cool, it gives us all, all the little settings right here from the main screen, that's pretty cool. I could actually make a profile just from this if I wanted to. So it's showing us that our print acceleration Only one Z driver. Yeah, I just don't understand why there's two motors and the belt. All right, so here we, we have our print acceleration. Everything's at around 2,500, which is, oops, please, please don't. Can I scroll up? Oh, next. Um, so everything's, I mean, this is like Marlin numbers, I think, right? 2,500, it may be a little higher, actually. Usually it's 500. Uh, Y's 200, Z acceleration, E zero acceleration, 5,000, hello. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Maximum speed settings, 300, 300. Emacs speed, 25. That means you can only go 25 while we're shooting. E1 max speed, okay, there's another one. Uh, e obviously stands, what did I just do? E obviously stands for, I wanna get this thing off, for extruder, E1, E0. Um, pretty cool motors, uh, motors. Menu, looks like, a, I don't know, something I would set up in Canva. Let's see, back is the main, so tool settings we were in. We can preheat, we can do some leveling, which I think we're gonna do right now. Let's click the leveling icon. Auto level, baby step, level settings. What is level settings? It gives us the offsets, negative 29, 22, is that right? Uh, yes, it appears to be. So negative 29 means it's to the left, and 22 means it's back, which is what it is. Uh, Z offset has already been calibrated. 0.39, that means that thing is really close to our nozzle. Leveling values, are they are, oh, they did one already, okay. So it looks to be, if I look at this really quickly, I see negative 0.23, let's call it, is the lowest, and the highest is 0.15. So, what are we, like a 0.3 variance, not the worst. Let's do weather to perform automatic, I love this. This is great, weather to perform, yes, automatic leveling. All right, 21 points. Let's just see it do its thing. Click this light back on. All right. I don't. So it stopped, which is good. So I was curious about this. This appears to be some sort of optical sensor back here. The Y axis. What's the Y axis tripping? Like, let's all get it. Let's all get involved with this. This is the end stop for the Y axis. It's just, is it just a broken end stop? It is, I mean, but there's gotta be a reason for it. So I, I don't know if you all can see that. That's just an exposed end stop, which is what it would look like if you took off, um, Bend that back. Took off, took apart an end stop. It's just this red little, well, there's no lever on it where they're, they're supposed to be. I assume that they accounted for that. So this is act, it's just like a broken end stop right from the factory. There's nothing for this to hit. So that just means I can't print right from the box. This not a good start. Of course, we're gonna fix it. So like the, See if I can show you as best I can. End stop is right here, this black thing behind this green circuit board. There should be a small metal arm, and that's what pushes forward and trips that red button that you can see. There is no arm, it's been taken off. Thought maybe they had a reason for it. So right here, the, right here the wheel is going to contact that arm, and that's how it's determining the end stop. But it's not doing that because there's just no metal arm there. Uh, it's almost close to clicking that red, the actual end stop switch itself. Let's see if I have an end stop arm lever somewhere. I'm sure I do. Let's look.
So this is why you keep scraps in case something like this comes up. I'm pretty sure I have one, but it's possible that I don't. I feel like I just... All right, we got Enfrost. I'm just gonna take the... So this is what an end stop's supposed to look like. See this metal arm? Can you hear that? It's clicking that red button right there and it's opening or closing the circuit. Click, click. This right here, no metal arm. It's not being able, it's not, nothing is there to click that button because the arm's not there. These are very easy to take off. You just pinch them in, pinch them inward. I need like tweezers or something. Give me a second. Actually, I could probably, probably do it. So we can see, we can remove. All right, Colin, thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Sorry, it's not the most engaging stream. We're trying, though. All right, so we can, I didn't clip it. These are just pressure in there via pressure. So I just took it out by collapsing the sides in like that and then pushing it in. So we're just going to reverse that to plug it into this YN stop. So not going to be the best angle to show you all what I'm doing here. I just know that. So getting it out is simple. Putting it in is not simple. Did I have just taken this? No, it's a different, is it a different board? So here we go. Surgery. I thought maybe JG Maker was doing like some sort of weird, I don't know what. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this thing off the printer. Sorry, we're doing this. We're gonna take this off the printer and do it uh, while it's in my hand. Cause it's just, I got no room down there to move. You might be able to see better what, I'm, what the problem is here. So if you're a new 3D printer, if you're a new user, and you go to home your machine for the first time that happens, you're gonna have no clue what happened. You're not gonna know what to do. That's unfortunate. So here we go. Here's the end stop. Uh, this black, or this red button right here, that's what triggers the end stop. There should be a metal arm right here that wheel presses against and activates it. There is no metal arm there. So we're taking one out from my old end stop from a machine I don't use on anymore, presumably. And we're putting it in a new. So I don't even, so there you go. Now when I activate it with that metal switch, it's going to actually work. Before it just ran on the end stop and it ran our bed continually into the back of the printer. Gonna cause no damage, but a little jarring, a little worrying. So two things were broken on this. Uh, wait a second, what side do I want? I want this to be, uh, I really can't put it up, can I? Kind of want it to be like this, so it's up, but I don't know, I can't mount it like that, the way they have this set up, so hopefully this triggers. So two issues with the printer out of the box. Um, I don't like that this is like that. One was that front uh, belt tensioner is broken. That's really not the biggest deal. This is a big deal. This shouldn't happen. Uh, but it does, I mean, I, they gave me this unit for free. So I don't know if they're giving me whatever has been on the testing floor for like a while and, you know, it's just in ill repair. Probably not a good idea on their part. Not that like everyone looks at me, it's just not smart. So now let's listen if this activates. Still not activating. Yeah, this one, yeah, they, they don't always use it, you know, the metal arm. Uh, most of them do, but this one is just not, this one definitely needs it. There's nothing down there. 
Oh wait. Is it? Not really activating. It's almost activating. This needs to be the other way around. Oh man, this thing wants to activate so bad. You know what we can do? Just for purpose of this, we can probably add something onto that just to make it active. It's gonna be so off though. It's kind of frustrating. So I need this metal arm to be the other way. It's down, it's too far away. Hmm. So let me think. This would be like that. But this doesn't mount the proper way. That needs to be mounted like that. Crikey's. All right, what can we do? I can use a piece of super glue or something like that just to make it a little bit of a loss because I just don't know how to make this activate. Actually, I probably know what we can do. I probably know what we can do. It's definitely not what you should do. I'm going to unscrew one of these screws, take it out completely. Unscrew this to loosen it. Oh no, I can't even do that actually, I'm lying to you. Because the way they soldered this, bend this up and forward. But the way they soldered this, with the pins in the back, I can't even do that. But I can move it up one screw hole, right? If it's up one screw hole. All right, we fixed it. So all we did was, there's two screws in this, supposed to be one down there and one up here. We, it wasn't activating in the normal position, so we moved it up and we're only gonna fix this using one screw and not two. Uh, so I'm not really sure how it's meant to actually activate in the first place, even if there was an arm there. So something's not right, something's missing. Uh, but let's just listen. You think I put it back on wrong? I was gonna do the hot glue. You think I put it back on? There's no other way to put it back on. So I can't flip it because, I'll show you. I mean, I don't think I can. So it should be like this. This is how we want it. Oh, is that how they had it, like this? Oh, was it like that? Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Jack, you're right, thank you very much. I, for some reason, I just didn't think there were uh, portholes on this side of the circuit board for the screw to go through. Jack is 100% right. We owe an apology to JG Maker for that. That being said, we did make it work. Oh, uh, that being said though, again, they, they should have had the arm on this thing. That was a mistake on their part. But yes, thank you, Jack, very much. You are correct. This just doesn't look right, so it wasn't, uh, I guess it wasn't my first thought, but you're right. Thank you for helping me out. Now this will be more secure with both the screws in there. If I can actually get them both in. I would take out this plug to get better access, but they glued it in. All right. Very good, Jack. Thank you, thank you. All right, now let's take a look. Let's listen. Wait. Is it literally not hitting itself? I can't tell if it's actually hitting or not. We're gonna, it actually sounded like the way I had it uh, hit the sensor better, but it just could be possible that I'm not, I'm not hearing it right, right now. So let's turn it back on. Let's hone these axes. Let's all hold our breath. Teamwork makes the, the printer work. So, so we're going to go to tools and we're going to try and do, let's just do the home. Let's just home it. Let's home the Y. Eh, let's home it all. Home all. Sorry, you can't see it. It's doing its thing. Oh, we got proper. We got it. And stop. Engage. All right, cool. 
Very good. All right, teamwork. Carriage upside down. What carriage? What did I do? All right, definitely have to make some tea because my throat's starting to get there. So let me move this back now. There you go. You heard it. You heard it home again against that Y axis. So that was cool. All right. So Jack did it. Very good. Let's do. Let's go back to where we lay. Uh, where we were off. Where we le last left off. Our heroes were attempting to see what the the auto bed leveling or the bed probing uh, does. So we'll go to leveling under the menus, and then auto level. It's going to be 21 points. It said. Now it's 22 points. No, 21. Huh? Printer halted. So the, the Y is just not homing right, I don't think. Printer halted homing error. Okay. Let's turn it off. Let's try it again. From here, we go to tool, leveling. Auto leveling, and yes, we're going to perform it. So we're doing 21 points. So it's definitely not activating like it should. I think I might switch it to how I had it, to be honest with you. Um, the Y axis, it just doesn't, the, it's using the wheel, which a lot of them do, to uh, activate that, that end stop, and it's just not hitting it like it should every time. So now it should be 22 of 50, 23 of 50. Is it doing anything? Twenty-seven of fifty. Oh, these are seconds. Okay, these are just seconds counting down. Yeah, it's not hitting the Y properly underneath. So, it's just counting down. Automatic leveling in process. Please wait for completion. Thirty. I thought they were points, like thirty-five X of whatever, but it's just counting down to fifty seconds until I guess it's going to start. It's not doing anything right now. But it's also getting warm, which I was curious if it was going to heat the bed up for us. The bed's definitely getting hot, though. So we're at 40 seconds. Forty-six. Let's see what happens when we get to 50. Oh, wait a second. Let me, let's scratch this. I guess 50 is the temperature and we're going there. And when the bed gets to 50, we're gonna, it was going up a second at a time, so. John O'Connor, what up, brother? So let's catch everyone, all right, we're doing our first level. Let's catch everyone up. What's up, John? Uh, making some tea. We just put the JG Maker R1 together. Went together very quickly. Y end stop was broken. The lever on the end stop wasn't there. We had to do some surgery on an old end stop and then put it back on correctly. Thanks to Jack, who was eagle-eyed with that. That being said, I still don't think it's in the right position. We might have to fix it down the line. Um, but after, other than that, it went together quickly. We're doing auto leveling on it. So the bed probing's happening. What is that, the second probe on here? So that's two, three, four, five. So it's probably a five by, I don't know what. This looks like, is it the first line or the second line? We'll see when it comes back. Five by five, maybe? Yeah, it's heating the bed, Jack. I, it, was, it was going up in uh, even intervals. I assumed it was seconds. All right, so we're doing an auto bed level. We saw that they had already done one and they had saved, they had saved their settings within the printer already. And the bed looked pretty good. Um, now you'll notice there's no, I don't know if you saw it under here, there's no bed knobs. So we're not adjusting this bed at all, which is cool for beginners. Uh, we, you know, we have our bed probe to kind of make up for that. And it looked like from the bed mesh that they already created, the bed wasn't all that bad. It looked pretty stable. So we'll see. Better. What's up, brother? Good to see you. I got to catch one of your lives. We're always doing this. We're like, uh, I don't want to say we're battling because I ain't battling you, brother. But uh, we're always like semi on together. So it stinks. I always have to catch you in the, uh, in the aftermath. But 
This is the JG Maker R1. Have you heard of it? Probably not. Uh, no one has, but listen, that's what we're doing it for. Get the word out. It's your basic, uh, you know, I don't want to say run in the middle, run in the middle, but you know, average bed slinger. We're going to see if we can make it a little above average, especially by putting clipper onto it, obviously. So five by five. Yep. So if anyone doesn't see who's in the chat, 3D print SOS fetter, um, awesome guy, awesome channel. There goes that Y again. Awesome guy, awesome channel. Check him out, please. He's doing projects from everything from bed slingers to core XY to a new desk in his, uh, office space for 3d printers to go just check out the channel subscribe like do everything we actually do hey we're still live brother we're on uh like just over an hour it's together we just did our first uh auto bed leveling let's see printer halted all right this homing on the y is not working we're gonna go back to my uh my other fix which is when i put it in improperly it actually managed to home better so So this is the correct way. Jack was right. He did his due diligence to make sure that I put it in right, but the correct way ain't cutting it. It's not activating on the Y end stop properly. The wheel's just hitting too low on the end stop and it's not triggering. I figured you were, Ed. I appreciate you even logging on then, man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it, actually I could probably just put it lower. So I'll move it where it is, same position, but just lower so that the far side of the end stop uh, is lower down, obviously, so the wheel can contact it better. Let's listen. Nope. That ain't it. We gotta go the way I did it. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't really believe it, but... Actually, I don't think we can go that way. So how did I have it? So we're twisting the end stop around. Raising it up a screw. Putting it back in. So this is definitely going to, it activates. Here's what I'm worried about. Soldered board, the soldered board is touching right here along uh, the aluminum extrusion, which I hope is not going to send uh, an open or closed incorrect. Let's find out. What do we care? For science, right? Okay, so we put it in properly. We're gonna home. Tool, home. Uh, where's the home all? I can't see it. Home all. Okay, let's see if it activates that Y. Okay, it's, I can hear it much better. I don't know if you all can uh, on the stream. I, I can hear it activating it like chunky, very, very fat, so. Yeah. This, uh, this one's got a draw, John. Surprisingly effective, these drawers. Okay, so I think we solved the Y-axis problem. We'll keep it at that. Let's go ahead. We did our first bed mesh. I guess we'll introduce some filament to this machine. Let it shake hands, and then we'll, I guess, try to start a print. So we have to learn how do we move this. I want to move the Z way up, 10 millimeters. All right. So it's working. It's alive. Now we can heat it up. So I gotta go to the preheat screen. I want to go choosing 220. It has the kind of like preset 
preheating options here up at the top. Plus or minus brings you to them. So I chose 220. We're gonna drop some filament in here and see exactly what's going on. What a stop. What the heck is that? Uh, should we use their filament? I never use the provided filament. Might as well. JG Maker. All right. Had air in it. Or it didn't have air in it, rather. It had pressure. So orange, like one of my favorite, probably my favorite color. It's a pretty, pretty decent orange we got here. Almost matches my shirt. All right, little spool goes on, right through our filament run out sensor, because we have that on this 3D printer. Comes equipped. Sometimes you gotta just kinda bend it around properly. So there we go. Into the hot end. Didn't I wanna adjust, didn't I wanna tighten the nozzle? Let's do that later. I like this very heavy gear uh, extruder tension right here. Yeah, I usually never use it because this is like filament of unknown origin. Like I know that obviously JG Maker's given it to me and it's from them and it says JG, but like, I don't know how long this has sat anywhere. So I like to use known good filament. Uh, it did extrude some blue, so that means it was checked. I guess that's the filament they gave us. That was just the leftover filament. So besides getting a 250 reel, we got this as well. Uh, and you could tell it was extruded a little bit by the tip. Uh, blue is what came out right there, so I guess that is the filament they used to check this machine for operation. Cool. Um, yeah, this is direct uh, extrude, direct extrusion, John. We opened up the print head, the shroud earlier. The shroud comes off, but then it's all one unit. So I didn't want to start taking out like all these different screws to look at the internals of the, uh, the hot end and the extruder, which is a little annoying that, that it operated like that, but it is what it is. Might only be a few screws, really, and ultimately to open it, but if you don't know, I don't want to do it on stream because it's be here for days with me doing screws. Um, okay, filament's in. We're gonna slice a print. We're gonna get rolling here. Let's cool down. Is there a single cool down button? No, just by tens. Bring it down to zero. Okay. So we're cooling down. I guess we can take this opportunity to download the slicer. Slice. Slice a print. Use the included uh, nesting doll SD. And get going. We done no bed leveling, no Z offset adjustment, just so you know. Uh, they gave us paper to do it, which is cool. Uh, we're gonna do that live. We'll do it live. Okay. So, let me punch out this website. All right. JG Slicer Software, JG Crete, certainly what it says. Download, oh great, great. Downloading this is gonna erroneously affect my computer, no doubt. So on the JG Maker website, we have the R1 in front of us and it has firmware, source code, user manual, and a simple setup guide. This is what I was using earlier to fumble my way through the setup. It was really simple besides having a broken end stop switch. It was very simple. Now, I was able to look through the source code, I think it was. Oh my, give me one second. My daughter is calling me. If I don't answer her, she'll be upset. And she hung up. Yeah, filament runout sensor. 
Is that filament sensor mounted or just holding onto the filament? It's mounted. I'll get you a bigger, a better look. So it's mounted, it's threaded up here. So it's mounted right here to the side of the spool holder. So it's mounted right through there and it can't move. So it's not just uh, dangling on by the filament. So filament run out sensor, dual Z, dual Z stepper motors too, and dual Z and a timing belt. So we've done everything here. All right, let's, did we download? Did we download the slicer? We did. Um, God, don't run it. Do, do we do a Benchy? We don't, right? Is Ed still here? Ed's the de facto Benchy master. Actually, give me that. Give me that shortcut. All right, so earlier I was saying uh, they give you source code for Marlin right here. So they give you the Marlin uh, firmware that's here. So I was able to use the .pio to check out the build, and I could see right here they're building it under an MKS Robin Pro board. That's what made me think that's what board it is. Uh, so from that, we can extrapolate a clipper configuration. I know it's an STF, STM32F103ZET6 chip. It says that on there. So we can figure that out. Hopefully that means we can get a clipper flash onto here. I think we're going to do it on the stream. We're going to go a little late. I am home alone. My wife's in transit right now, uh, flying on a plane. I hope she gets to where she's got to go. No benchies, Ed. So we got nothing eating dinner. I probably should get something delivered to the house at this point. Uh, okay, if no benchies, what can we what can we slice? A cube? It's got to be like a 15-minute slice. And keep in mind, this is Marlin. We checked out the accelerations. They all cap out at about 2,500 uh, cubic millimeters per second, um, millimeters squared per second, which is good. The speed is, you know, the speeds are the speeds because you don't know what's actually throttling those speeds. Cooling time, minimum cool temp is going to obviously throttle our speeds and stuff like this. So, ooh, Jack, 4 a.m. I am sorry, brother. Uh, but, hey, thank you for sticking around. I appreciate you helping out as well. Uh, the rest of this will be up if you actually want to see where we got with it, but thank you so much for coming by. Have fun getting some sleep, and good luck at work tomorrow. I know we all need it. All right, where'd you go? Uh, belt tensioner was also broke up here. I mean, I'm not really too worried about it. Belts are properly tensioned. Actually, is this one properly tensioned? No, x-axis belt, very sloppy, but it's got a uh, belt tensioner. Hey, Lewis, what up, bro? Is it Lewis or Luis? I never really know, and I want to be accurate. All right, so this, the x-axis belt definitely needed a little bit of slack. We adjusted the eccentric nut on uh, our print head. We did a lot of things. Where did it go? So where did our JG Create go? I was opening it. Oh, it's right here. So it's probably, my guess is gonna be this is a Cura reskin because it's just taking forever to open. So Cura takes about, I don't know, 15 minutes to open up. This is probably the same. And then we'll try and slice something, not a benchy, uh, but something adequate. We're back. Um, 10, 15 minute print. Then I want to try and maybe while it's printing, we'll try and put together a uh, configuration, a, a firmware file image for this printer. And we'll see if we can flash it. So JG Maker contacted me. They sent me this 3D printer free of charge. I thank you, JG Maker, for purposes of this stream. So that's where we came and they found me and they found me because of all of you so i appreciate everyone what the hell is this is it open oh boy so it's definitely a cure reskin anyway i appreciate everyone who subscribes who likes who talks in discord does all those things that lets us do these sort of things all right so we are on we on the you guys seeing what i'm saying no you're not i'm sorry I apologize. So this is what I was freaked out about. 
This is what the JG Crete, uh, Crete has an E at the end, so I don't think that's what this word is up here. This is what their slicer looks at. It's very clearly a Cura reskin, uh, but there's just nothing going on right now, I guess, until I add a printer. So JG Maker R1, not the plus. They, they skimped out and gave me just the R1. We're definitely going to freaking Orca after this. So X is 240, Y is 240. I guess it's a little bigger than normal. I'll be honest, I didn't really look at the specs on this thing. Uh, shame on me. So what kind of start code we got? Homing, resetting the extruder, no call. So this is weird. This comes built in with a bed probe. We did R11. No call to a mesh and no call to probing. So you would not be using your bed probe if you were use their settings. So that's not cool. I don't like that. Let's call a G29, which is bed probing, not probing. Uh, so that's like a gigantic oversight. It has to be after the G28, obviously. We don't see any G28s after that, right? No. Uh, very, very weird. Very, very weird. Next. All right, now we have a build plate. I haven't been on Cure in a while, so I'm going to be a little rusty. I apologize. Uh... <clears throat> Did we like that little, let's, what's a good calibration print? A very simple one, a snake, a dragon. I don't think I have one. Yeah, it's definitely Kira. <laughs> yeah, this is the JG Maker. I don't know what you were looking at, CGK. Uh, this is the JG Maker R1. We just put it together. We had some issues. Uh, no, it's PEI bed, uh, John. Uh, we had some issues, really no fault of our own. We made it work. It's, you know, we're trying our best here. We're doing what we can with this 3D printer. We need a, we need a model. Should I do a CGK? You are here. Do I have it on this 3D printer though? Uh, I mean on this, I don't know if I have it on my new laptop. Is it in my, is it on my website? So I'm looking for a good print to start off. I want it to be, this is a Marlin based printer. It's going to take forever. No, I don't. Uh, so I'm just going to do a cube, right? It's just going to be a cube. So can I import a cube? Do they have one for me to import? Uh, you can't even like import just a regular old cube. They don't have like primitive shapes. Arrange, clear. No. Okay. Thanks, Kira. Uh, 3D printing. <clears throat> Where is it under? Prints? I don't think so. Where do I have all my... Hmm. I just, I can't even get a cube. This is crazy. All right. We're going to get a, we're going to get a Prince Leo cube. Listen, everybody, go to princeleo3d.com, all right? Websites full of knowledge, links everywhere, join the Discord, do all those things. We can also get models from here. Silly Cornhole is here. I thought the uh, Calibration Charlie was here, but I guess it's not. I have this really kind of silly cube. We're going to use that. It shouldn't be this hard to get silly cubes into Cura, but here we are. Okay, so quality, 0 0.2, oh, we're not even in expert mode? Come on, man. Uh, so 0 0.2 layer height, 0 0.4. Are we on screenshot? Yes. Uh, okay, line width, 0 0.4, whatever. I mean, I want my initial line width to be a little bigger. I don't know if I'm really gonna matter. Line width, wall width, outer, inner, top and bottom, infill, skirt, initial line width. Ooh, 120%, I like that. Mm. <clears throat> Good wall. Infill is at what, 13%? Perfectly fine. What's our speed at, you say? 60, 60, 30, 30. Yeah, you know, Very slow. Very slow. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through this. Material, we're printing at 200. Let's go 205, just for the gags. 50 build temp, perfectly fine. Keep flow at everything. Actually, keep flow at 98. 100, 98. It's PLA. Um, 
The last thing I want to do is uh, adhesion. I want to screw it. Okay, cool. Slice her up. 26 minutes. If we get through half of this thing, I'll be happy. I did no Z offset adjustment. So let's take a look. This is such an important feature, everyone. The preview button right here uh, lets you see what your prints are doing, how they're sliced. All right. Cubic infill, whatever. All right, I'm now going to save this to this wacky SD card, uh, USB drive they gave me. And you'll all get a, you'll all get a chance to see this. Marlin is turtle, and yeah, Marlin is turtle. So here's this USB, really nice USB drive they gave me, uh, with a large SD at the back, and inside the large SD, smaller SD. So it's a nesting USB, which is pretty sick. Uh, I don't know yet, I'm not even sure what the screen or the printer takes. Yeah, I have my own calibration cube. I didn't know I had it either, to be quite honest with you. I think I made that like a long time ago. Yeah, it's like a stupid cube too. I don't even like it. I, I wouldn't use it if I was you. All right, this USB drive, I don't know if it's my computer or not, but this USB drive just doesn't want to show up. Might be using a different one. Could be me. Okay, we're in, baby. All right. Apologize for all this. I'm going to save the print to the removable drive, then we're going to inject it. Booyah. Okay, we have a print on the drive. How do we get it in? Side, side of the screen. Looks to be just like a regular SD. So we take this out, take this out. Oh, uh, the view types are very thorough. If you don't, if you've never seen that before, you don't use it, uh, you definitely got it. It's huge benefit to us. Wait a second, am I gonna lose this thing? How do I even, it's so, it's, it's not in yet and I can't touch it anymore. It's like flat, so it looks to be in. Okay, let's go back, uh, back again. Printing, blank files, wait, files are disappearing. Oh my God, files are disappearing. That's not good. All right, so my files disappeared. I can't get the SD card out because it's too far in. Yeah, this is a rip, all right. This is really... And they say Clipper is complicated. Who are these people? Clipper is too hard. How do I do this? All right, SD card back in. Try this again. Wrong slot, was that the wrong? I don't think there's another slot, man. Yeah, John, I think that's it, brother. I think that's it. Oh wait, John, you're right. There's an SD card right here. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. So we missed Jack. Jack was here earlier and he uh, helped us right some wrongs. Guess we can use him again. All right, ready? Probably put it in the right slot and it works. Who would have thought? Yeah, it works. I'm a dumb dumb. These things happen. Okay, so. All the different print files right here. The top one right here is our cube. So I'm gonna click it. Print this model, yes. And we're gonna get some information about the model. Please stop. So here we go. Uh, just shows us a blank cube, which is, I guess, there's no picture for it, but. Gives us the temperatures that are happening right now. The bed slowly heating up. 
it tells us the time that it's taking, such like that. We can stop it. We can also hopefully Z offset adjust from here because we're going to have to. I didn't do any Z offset adjustment. There was one already inside the printer, already calibrated. So I'm assuming JG Maker did it for us. Uh, so thank you. But we're going to have, obviously have to do it ourselves. I also manhandled this bed. All right. This is PEI. PEI, you can see, you see all those oil spots? That is going to mar my adhesion tremendously. You need to clean your PEI, everybody. I'm not going to, though. We're going to use the other side where hopefully it works. So if I get bad adhesion, it's completely my fault. But always clean your PEI. The black uh, shows the oils more, but those gold ones will have so much oil on, you'll just never see it. What's the port to the SD slot? Ethernet? Yes, it is an Ethernet port. Uh, it comes with an Ethernet cable. So we should be able to uh, connect to Pronterface, if that's still a thing. I know it is because someone on, on the Discord recently was talking about it. I don't know if, I guess we could use that to transfer files. I don't know if we could just blindly transfer files. I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> yuck, I know. We don't mention Pronterface. That being said, while this is doing its thing, I think we should create that firmware image. What do y'all think? You want to see how we do this? I mean, we're just, just copying and pasting stuff. It's really not hard. The thing is, we're going to brick the machine when I put the wrong firmware in, but we should be able to bring it back with their correct firmware. No greasy fingers, brother. It just is what it is. And yeah, they are greasy. Okay, this is doing its thing. It's heating up. I like that we can remove the screen pretty easily. It's heating up. We're getting 205. Now, this should start auto bed leveling. Once it does, we're going to get off this and we're going to, I'm going to show you about how to do the clipper thing. And then we'll go back to the print as it's printing. I, <clears throat> can I do? I do have the Brio in here. I wanted to bring a webcam shot into that. Right here though. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Okay. Let's watch this thing do it. So, so the the slicer profile they had for this out of the factory had no bed probing in it. We saw that in the Star G code. A new printer is not going to know that's a thing. So we had to make that adjustment. Really something JG Maker should be dual Z, uh, show y'all. So are we auto leveling? We are. All right, so we're auto leveling, it's working. I love the smell of a new printer in the morning or the night. Dual Z rods, dual Z motors, timing belt, keeping it all Aligned, filament runout sensor. JG's own brand of PLA. So we're rolling. It's doing its thing. Uh, let's see. We had issues with the YN stop. We fixed those. Actually, I had to make a little bit of an edit to it. No mesh load. You know what, John? I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to see if we could probe the bed beforehand, you know? That's all. But yeah, we could have just simply M420 S1 to load. Could we just created that mesh? We could have done that. But I figured for everyone's benefit. Okay, let me think. Which is not an easy task. So you all can watch that a little bit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So we're going to create a firmware image. So we're going to try and flash this to Clipper and see if it works. Let me show you how I reverse engineer this so we can all be on the same page. Right in their firmware, I told you I found out what board it had because I went to what their source code was. And I was able to look in their, look in their Marlin folders and see that this is MKS Robin Pro board. That means... That means we can just Google it. There's gotta be a config, right? So yeah, sure enough, we found a pinout for this MKS Robin Pro. Uh, hopefully it's right. 
because our board, when we looked at it earlier, said JG Maker on it was stamped. <clears throat> and then we can look and look. There's also there's already a Clipper configuration file for this, and it tells us at the top of the configuration file how to flash it. So right here, STM F, F, uh, F103, that's it. all the information we're going to need to flash this. Um, apart from that, so the pin diagram and had for the MKS Robin, I was cross-referencing it. I'll show you how uh, with this Marlin stuff again. So if you go, uh, again, I'm in their Marlin firmware that they offer on, JG Maker offers on their website. If you go in Marlin into, I believe, sources, there's a pins diagram. Wait, that's not where I want to go. How did I find that out again? Oh, wait, no, that's not, <laughs> we're reverse engineering the wrong thing. So if we look at, wait a second. Should have been paying attention to the print for the Z offset. So it's doing its thing. The offset actually wasn't that bad. I'd like it to be a little lower, but it's doing its thing. We're doing that PL3D cube. Everyone get into it. It's the new craze. All right. Okay, so we know how we're gonna flash the image. Let's create that image. We need a MCU host that already has Clipper on it. I'm gonna use my Innovato, Innovato Quadra. Uh, 168.1222. Uh, I gotta log into it. So if you were to start a new Clipper machine right now, you'd be SSHing. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm SSHing into uh, my Innovato Quadra, which is currently hosting two Clipper printers onto it. But all I need is the Clipper interface. The MCU, the Quadra has Clipper on it, so I can use that now. So I'm gonna change directory to the Kia folder. Dot slash Kia, and then I'm gonna run uh, the Kia's, no, I don't want to update right now. Kia's main menu and their folder system in order to create a firmware image. Screenshot, all right, good. All right, so it's gonna be under advanced and then under build only. And you'll see, this is the firmware image creation center, if you want to call it that. Uh, I'm going to set up the firmware how I want it, and I'm going to hit quit. It's going to save that and compile our firmware in the exact specifications I need. What are those specifications? Well, they're right here. So it's going to tell us the common pin macking, and right up here at the top. When running make menu config, which is what this is, enable extra low, extra low level configuration setup. So the first thing we're going to do is Compile this for Ethical. Oh, I've lost the function. Oh, okay. Let's try this again. So I accidentally logged us out of my Quadra and or my Quadra, thank you, reset it so, just log myself out. Okay, so we're enabling extra low level uh, configuration, just like that. We're going to make sure this is set to STM32 architecture, which is what it is. And now we need to make this a 20 bootloader. So we go down, it's already set up like that for us, very nice. And it's gonna be connection on USART 3, PB11, PB10. So connection on USART, I click to the right and it brings a new menu up. On USART 3, PB11, PB10, that's what I wanna use. So it only gives us those specifications. We are on SDM, 32F103, which is right here, STM32. It's on the STM32F103 model. We've enabled extra low-level configuration, so we have access to all these different options down here. And we've made them 28 KIB, and the serial is on USART3, PB11, 
SP V10. That's it. The board rate, any extra GPIO pins, it's not telling us to configure any of those. I hit Q for quit, it's gonna ask if I wanna save it. Yes, it is now compiling us Clipper firmware for the exact board that we just specified, which is right there. So after this gets compiled, oh boy, no one told me? No one called me and told me? So we knew this was gonna happen because I touched the bed so, so much. Uh, we had a problem. We have to stop the print. So adhesion was poor, the Z offset was too high. If we can see, I can see lines in there way too much. See right there? Z offset ain't right. Yeah, is this, this is a banger. I think I gotta skip this song. It's too much, right? So it's my own fault for not paying attention. I'm gonna start a print again. Uh, I wish I did load a bed mesh now, John, because we're going to have to sit through that. Uh, it's my fault for not paying attention to the Z offset. I should have paid attention to it. Can I do an offset right now? So I can baby step it right now if I wanted to. So there's a baby step menu for this 3D printer, which I'm in right now. And I'm going to do that as, uh, as it starts printing. Yeah, I didn't notice. Um, you know what? You can't really see based on where the camera is. I'm gonna try and get the camera uh, a little lower. I'm sure I'm boring everyone to death with this firmware image creation stuff, but it is fascinating to me, I love it. All right, we're not skipping. It's a banger. Okay, so. This print is going to start again. We're going to remember this time to adjust our Z offset. I wish we weren't probing the bed right now, but we are because we set it up that way. Back to our firmware image. All right, so we've created the firmware image. It's done. We can now close out this form of SSH. Now we're going to SSH into it in another way, which is WinSCP. It gives us a different UI way to look at it. Login to my quadra the same exact way I just did through the IP address. Then I can front load all the information. And now we have to find our Clipper firmware file. That's gonna be under the Clipper folder, under the out folder, and then it's gonna be right here, clipper.bin. So I'm going to put this, where should I put this? I'm just gonna put this right in my 3D printing uh, folder. So. Left right here, screen, side of the screen is all files and folders uh, unique to my laptop or that are on my laptop. The right side is the device I'm SSHing into. So by just dragging and dropping it, I've moved a file from my Innovato Quadra over to my laptop. So I can close this out. And now I put it in the 3D printing. And it should be right there. So now I'm gonna move this to an SD card once we're finished with this print. And we're gonna try and flash Clipper onto this 3D printer. Exciting stuff, everybody. So there was no clipper config for this. That's why we're going through all these hoops in order to get this done. If you have tea, now's the time to make it. Yeah, you know me, TGK. Show all the nitty gritty, every little step, even the stuff that's a snoozer. Oh, I know why she called. Okay. Oh, I should have been using this, huh? All right, so the bed probing is almost finished. Boring, 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 I know. I do like the color of this filament. The orange is a very nice orange. Uh, goes with the extruder gear that's on top. It's gonna do us, give us a prime line, then I'm gonna start baby stepping this thing using the screen. So the screen is very simple. It lets me pick a denomination as to what I wanna baby step. I have 0.1 millimeters, and I'm gonna start bringing the Z down. And I can see at top, it's giving me uh, the new numbers. So it started at 
negative 0.39, I'm at negative 0.59, I'm at negative 0.70 now. I really want to squish this thing out. All right, I think we got it. We're at point, negative 0.9, and I think we found the correct offset. It might be a little, might be a little rough on this thing, bringing it up. I'm going to go negative 0.86. So I'm watching the whole time from the rear to make sure exactly how this is going. I think we got a good compression of our filament now, so we should be fine. Okay. You know what, uh, CGK? I, I run stream elements, and the previews of all my sound stuff works, but they don't work while I'm live for some reason, which is annoying because it sounds kind of cool. Let me show you. So I think it's stream elements. Hopefully my password's not on here. Please don't copy. Oh my God. It, that was so hot, that tea I just drank. All right, so streaming tools, overlays. So I'm using this overlay right now. So if I edited it, oh wait, that's a chat overlay, I'm sorry. Using this, uh, just they had this Spitfire animated thing. You can already just uh, import it directly onto it and it just works apparently and if I emulate like uh, a subscriber event right it just happens which I think it should ha see it happened right here for whatever reason it doesn't want to work it doesn't want to work uh, when we're live for some reason why doesn't someone donate me 20 bucks and let's see if that works let's see if the donation thing works Uh, yeah, so I don't know what I don't know what's going on. How? Um, good question, John. So I'm right next to it. Not loud at all. It's about as loud as the Ender 3 uh, V3 SE, which is to say it's pretty quiet. So fans sound good. Power supply fan is on. Mainboard fan is on. Even the uh, hot end fan is on, and it's really not all that loud. I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get a successful print now. I squished the heck out of this, uh, so it's gonna be a little. It's gonna have elephant's foot, but I just wanted to get. I just wanted to get it printing. Looks like it's moving pretty fast too, right? I like the A at the front. I don't know what it stands for. JG Maker? A, R1. So I don't know. No, I, that, I don't, if someone subbed, that was just me emulating it. I don't think anyone actually did. Oh, it did come up earlier? No sound, huh? Darn, I don't know why. It's supposed to have sound on it. Yeah, stream elements hasn't been kind to me for whatever reason. Like I have. Settings. Video volume, it's all up there. I don't know. For another day, I guess. Yeah, it, I, I keep forgetting about it until I'm done with the stream and then I'm just kind of like, oh, that's annoying, that never happened. It would be cool to hear it. Okay. Uh, T Guan Yin, this is T. This is T. Cheers to everyone. My throat's killing me. So can you hear it? It's actually not that bad. It's not loud at all. Got ourselves a nice little cube coming along. Cubic infill. You all can see it. So it's making its way. I'm excited to flash clipper. I don't know if we're gonna finish this cube. Do I have to? I think I should order some food if I can for the end of the stream. So we're doing a cube. It's a PL3D cube. If you don't know, now you know. I suggest everyone get one of their own. Uh, printing in JG Maker PLA arms that came with it. A 250 gram reel. Dino Nugget loves those size of reels. Hey, here we are. It's really, it's really pretty quiet. I, I am liking that. So we had some issues with the YN stop. I don't know CGK if you were here or not for that, but I had to add a lever onto the YN stop that wasn't there. 
And then I had to just do a little bit of fixing to make to bring it up so it actually triggered. Um, that was scary. I don't like that for a printer that's supposed to be good for just, uh, you know, for beginners. This printer is costed at just over 200 bucks, but then recently I went on their website and it's lower now. So for whatever reason, they've dropped the price to, I think, 189. So let's see, we have, these are all the different offerings from JG Maker. And today we're looking at this one. Oh, wow, we're at 160. So it was costed at 260. I don't think you can live like that in today's, uh, the makeup of, of today's 3D printing world. Uh, but 160 is way better. So 160, you're kind of still competing with the Ender 3 V3 SE, which is great for beginners because it has auto Z offset and we can flash clipper onto it very simply. Uh, this doesn't have auto Z offset. A lot of compete with in that regard and it's hard, but at 160, a printer like this, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's good for you. Maybe it's good for someone else. You know, it's printing right now. We just kind of sliced the print and made it work. The slicer is not good. It's old reskin Cura, whatever. Uh, so I wouldn't, I don't really like that. Cheers, Ed. I'm doing tea, brother, unfortunately. I mean, it's just a glass you're looking at, but. 250, I don't think you could, this isn't, you can't sell something like this at 250. But, you know, you got a, you got the Quiddy uh, Smart, I think is around 200. Um, or two, 300 maybe, 280. The KLP, the King Rune KLP1, which is right here. It's about 350, 330 right now. I'm loving this thing. Yeah, I know you don't have tea yet, I'm sorry. I wish I had something else, but I had a rough weekend, so we're drinking tea. Uh, so I, yeah, I, the King Rune, I'm loving this thing. I'm finishing a video on it. Oh, don't, you're tempting me. So I had an amazing burrito yesterday. I need to eat something right now. I'm trying to grow hub. Everything's closed. I wanted the Greek salad. Uh, do I get a burrito though? Oh my god, do I get the burrito stuffed with French French fries? So I'm not gonna tea. If they're open, I'm getting it. I think they're all closed. I would show you. Are they open? Oh my god, they're open. We're doing it. All right. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to take a look at this on our computers just so I can show you all exactly what's up with this thing. I only want steak. Oh my god, this thing is so good. KP3S. Yeah, um, what's his name? <laughs> what's the scale? Do we have a quarter to drop onto the bed here or the burrito and see exactly what scale it is? Stay. All right, this is coming to the right house here. Lazy Mike burrito. Seed. Okay. It's late too. 10 o'clock right now, yikes. How long have we been streaming for? Oh my God, just under two hours. I just wanna get clip around this thing. I'm dying to show you all. Again, I want to thank JG Maker for providing this 3D printer for the stream for the purposes of us viewing it, putting it together, streaming it. Uh, very nice of them. Uh, they've been awesome with me. They've been very, very nice. The printer, you know, had its issues uh, as we put it together, but right now it's running pretty smoothly. It's quiet, which is important. Um, action's pretty nice, so nothing wrong with that. So back to what John was saying. KP3S, I know Cuddy has one of those. This is the KLP1, which is the enclosed uh, version of it. I like it a lot. It's smaller build size. So if we open her up, so it comes enclosed, you gotta put the panels on it. You guys saw the stream. Smaller build size, 210, 210, 210, but you can do ABS and you can do PETG obviously. I'm gonna try PC tomorrow or nylon tomorrow probably because I have more of that. Uh, it just works and it's unadulterated. You're gonna hear me say that in this video. I mean, uh, unadulterated clipper. They're not putting any barriers for us like Quiddy has done, like Creality loves to do. It's just clipper, that's all you get. Um, have I contacted JG Maker Support? Not yet. I'm gonna talk to them after this stream and probably just uh, debrief exactly what happened and see how they are. They've been pretty nice before that. 
direct drive, less waste. There's no such thing as less filament waste. All we're we love it. Speaking of wasting filament, printed more of that Ziltec today. Awesome. Ziltec ABS, Ziltec, Ziltec, right? Z I L T Ziltec ABS. Awesome. Really like it a lot. Okay. So for all those who may have just joined us, JG Maker R1 is printing. Had some hiccups putting it together. It was quick to put together, but our unit had some problems. Two 50 gram filament spool. Dino Nugget loves them. Going through a filament sensor that stopped. 2Z rods, timing belt, 2Z motors, down to a direct extruder, pretty quiet right now, slicing off their slicer, which is a reskin of Cura. We're making a PL3D cube. If you don't know, get one. ChrisLeo3D.com, I'm joking. Um, running Marlin right now, the real whole thing of this is we want to put Clipper on this thing. I don't know that it can be done. We dissected their Marlin firmware. We found out it was using the board pins for an MKS Robin Nano Pro, Robin, Robin Nano. Um, so we're just going to flash this like that's what it is, and we're going to use those board pins. So let's let's figure it out. But we're going to wait for this print to end. And here we are. I mean, do you all want to wait? Do you want to see me slam clipper on this thing and see if it works? We're using lightning infill on this, by the way. No, we're not. I don't even think they have the option for lightning infill. So this is, I mean, you might think you're looking at Cura, but this is JG Crete, uh, their slicer. <clears throat> so if we were to go to infill, is there a section for that? There is, right? But you also see that we're, we're, we're topping out at 60, um, 60 millimeters per second. That's the speeds that we're topping out at. So we're not going that fast. Even though the accelerations on this printer uh, that you can read from the menu, they were pretty high. They were, we were capping somewhere around 25, 100 uh, square millimeters per second. Infill. Infill line distance. Okay. Uh, do we have lighting? Oh my god, they have it. I should have done it. I didn't know. I would not have thought they had it. Preview menu. Are you guys ready for this? And girls? You want to talk about ADH? Look at this. This is like wild. It's hectic. I'm not 100% sure like how this is 45 degree angle. What are we doing here? I mean, it looks pretty cool right there. That's actually kind of sick. Maybe we should use it more. And here's our PL 3D cube, right? 3D ridiculous. Cure is really old. I mean, listen. No. So, did they have cure? Did they have? I didn't know. For whatever reason, I kind of assumed lightning infill was. Uh, Prusa. I'm trying to remember last when the first time I heard it though. Maybe around Arachne uh, came out, so maybe. I mean, obviously you're right. Uh, no leveling wheels. It does have what I assume is an inductive probe. It's one like I've never seen before. It's uh, it's not a, a pin probe, so it's got to be inductive or proximity rather. Uh, their profile right out of the box had no bed mesh operations whatsoever. So their Cura reskin. Their start G code, just G28, and then lines of G code. No G29, no M40S1. So we were never going to be using that bed probe. So JG Maker, you got to fix that. Uh, yeah, no bed leveling wheels. So we just get it what it is. I think the variance I looked real quick was around 0 0.3 millimeters between lowest probe point, highest probe. No one uses lightning infill. Well. Someone begs to differ. That may be the first, uh, the first print we do on Clipper might have to be just like lightning infill cube, no walls, just to see. So we're moving along here. I'm thinking about stopping this thing. How much more we got? Let's look at the screen. So we did some baby setting adjustment, uh, baby stepping adjustment on this earlier. We now have better smush. 18 minutes. My time is going up, so that means we got like eight minutes left or something like that. I don't think, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's loading it by default. Never know, could be right. I, I just, I just don't think so. I mean, what I did was I put G29 in their star code and it ran it. So there may be, there would be some sort of conflict there, but there wasn't. 
Um, you miss the Y axis uh, end stop uh, was butchered. There's no lever on the end stop, so we had to find one from an old end stop that I had. Full bag of these. Uh, and then we had to try and kind of fiddle it to make it work. People loving on this lightning infill. Maybe we should. All right, let's get a clipper profile set up for eventually, for eventually um, getting this thing over the clipper. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to bring it over here. Screenshot. Okay. So let's create, let's see if, this is Orca Slicer, if you're not familiar with it. This is what all the new kids are, the cool kids are using. Let's see if JG Maker has any presence on Orca Slicer. I'm going to guess no for the R1, but I could be wrong, because I would imagine they would have just linked that. So these are the available that I, I passed, Jay. Right here. Okay. No, nothing on JG Maker. Anything on R1? No. Okay. We'll just make a clipper profile. Uh, one thing I wanted to notice. Uh, note today I upgraded to the newest version of Orca Slicer, which is 1.8.1, uh, uh, and it said updates to the T500, the Congo T500. Well, their update was reset for it, and it erased all my profiles. So that was kind of not cool. Uh, so I need to go through some old G code to find out exactly what I had, but you know, I don't know what happened there. Thanks, uh, thanks, Orca. User presets. Let's see. Do I have a my clipper? I probably can use one of these Ender Three profiles. I believe the R one's actually a little bigger than the Ender Three, though, so we do have to account for that. What's the build size on this? Does anyone know? Build volume: two thirty, two thirty, two fifty. Okay, so. In their slicer, it was 240, 240, 250. Uh, we'll stick with 230, though. So everything should be fine. I'm just copying. This is quite literally an Ender 3 uh, V2 with a 0.4 nozzle. This is like a clipper config I was using. Uh, large retraction length. Let's just make it one. Actually, let's find out what. Let's find out what they're using. Nope. Uh, so you're using a retraction distance of 2.0 uh, millimeters. I like to make it one. Normal Z-hop, retraction layer change, that all looks perfectly fine. What kind of machine G-code we got? Yes, so on some of the printers that don't, uh, if they have old clipper on it or something like this, they don't actually show a, a JPEG when you go to your fluid or your main sale. You gotta add this little line in the beginning of your machine G-code to make it happen. Not sure why, that was the answer to the T500, which I'm going to actually Make that fixed right now before I forget. All right, back to what we were doing. Uh, starting all this starting stuff. Pretty cool, pretty cool. No, we don't want to use that. We want to use this. So this is the same start G code I used from my KLP1. We're just going to use it for this uh, JG Maker R1. And we're going to call this the JG Maker R1. My burrito is being prepared. I'm sure you're all as anxious as I am. Alright, we're getting there. We're almost at the top of the P. Yeah, all those orders all those auto Z's are are a pain in the butt. Clipper just doesn't use them. Now I know there's a guy who uh, who created the Ender 3 V3 SE Clipper config. That gentleman also um, was able to use the the auto Z offset function. He called it PR touch, I think, or something like this. I had, I didn't mess with it yet. I'm just using that Ender 3 V3 SE on Clipper Flat right now, using uh, using a BL touch and setting the Z offset myself. Uh, but he might have found a way for it. We don't know, but pretty pretty cool if he did.
Yo, this burrito is gonna be sick. I, I don't, I don't think you're gonna. Ed, you had a, the worst burrito. I don't believe that's possible. I'm gonna tool around with this slicer. I don't think I need to make really a lot of adjustments. This is the R1. It's gonna be the same as the end of three. Acceleration. Oh, I didn't do anything to this. That's why. Let's see what. All right, here we go. That's it. This is what we keep it at. Acceleration at three. Very conservative. Speeds are gonna be all under 100, I think. Outer. Okay, that's per perfectly fine. This should be able to handle all this. I think this can handle a little faster. Uh, I'm gonna bump these numbers up. Just going this based off of what they had inside. First layer, 40, 50, outer wall, 150. No, nah, inner wall, 150, outer wall, 120. So it's a little slower. But that's, that's even if this uh, actually gets clipper flashed onto it. So, and we're gonna have something waiting. Voron cube waiting for it with lightning infill. Look at all these cute infills we have. And we see what they look like. No brim. We ain't got time for brims. G90 was found in before layer G code. Is that under my filament? Oh no, it would be here. Under my printer, what are they saying to me? Why is it giving me a problem? Oh, I know why. Wait. Yeah, I shouldn't be using it. I'm using relative extrusion. Maybe I'm not using relative extrusion. Now I'm using relative extrusion. Okay. Slice up this bad boron cube. This lightning infill is just the absolute worst. Look at this. Like, There's really no infill at all. Whatever. We're going to try it. If, we can, if this gets flashed properly, we're trying it. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Marlin was like topping out at 40 millimeters per second or whatever it was to get like decent prints. It was crazy. Now I do my first layer at 40 millimeters per second. And even then I'm like, oh, I should probably go faster than that. All right, we're getting there. I think we're like four layers away from the top. All right, so no, if you're asking me if I'm going Chipotle or maybe Ed had the bad Chipotle, I'm gonna pull up the burrito I'm about to get if you all can see this. They might not even have it on their menu anymore. Of course, they don't have pictures. Come on. They don't have pictures. All right. Can't show you. I'll post it in the Discord when I get this thing. I think I've posted this one in the Discord before. It's amazing. It's an absolutely amazing burrito. Yeah, no. Marlin is no knock on Marlin. They're giving you good quality. Like, this is a good quality cube. I can... Besides the awful elephant's foot I created when I did the Z offset live uh, in the beginning of this print, it's not a bad quality cube using JG Maker PLA. It's very nice. Carl's Jr.? Listen to me, if you get a burrito from Carl's Jr. and you don't expect it to be the worst experience of your dining life, that's on you. I mean, this thing looks pretty good. From this angle, I'm only seeing a little bit of it, but not a bad little cube. Cannot wait to flash clipper onto this. I'm getting anxious. My wife's in transit right now in flight. I haven't heard from her. She'll probably be here in like 30 minutes, so let's all hope that she makes it on the ground safely. Oh, JG Maker's texting me. JG Maker has emailed me. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, I think I asked for a question. I think I asked them about their board. See, they've been very, uh, very nice. All right, they showed me the worst pinout guide of their board ever, something I could have just Googled. Okay. 
They tried. Food's on the way. I know you all care. So when you're ordering 20 Jack in the Box tacos, you know what you're in for. Different. You know exactly what you're in for. It's like ordering a crate from uh, from White Castle. Like it costs a hundred dollars or whatever, but you know exactly what's gonna happen. All right, we've been live for just over two hours, two hours and fifteen minutes. About, I can't believe it. I, every time I say I'm not going this long, no one wants to hear me this long, and yet here we are. But we're close to the top layer, more importantly. So we have. Do I have an SD card? No. Got to wait till this finishes. So we're almost there. Again, I haven't had White Castle in forever, CGK. Forever. It's been a while. But I think guys at work do a White Castle Christmas thing that I think we'll be getting it kind of soon. So here we have, yet again, I wish I could zoom in from this angle. The JG Maker R1. Uh, it is a bed slinging style 3D printer. We have dual Z axis. We're using the FPLA through a runout sensor, which doesn't have any, I don't think, controls on here, but I didn't really look. Um, it's very quiet. 40 millimeters per second. Uh, the acceleration's 2,500 or so, so it's, it's doing its thing. It's not looking too bad. Um, PEI bed. We had a little bit of a snafu with the Y end stop. The main board looks fine. It's printing. Uh, I don't know that I, this is the best beginner printer simply because of the problems I had, namely the end stop. Uh, it went together very simple. The gantry went onto the bed. The filament, run, uh, the filament spool holder went on. The runout sensor went on. I connected the cabling to everything, and the screen went on. It was simple. So that stuff was really cool. Here is our cube. It's a quiet 3D printer. There we go. We have a cube. So, um, let's see, let me bring it over here. It looks a lot better in real life than it does. Oh no, I think the battery on my computer, on this uh, camera's gonna die soon. It's uh, not a bad looking cube. Bad elephant's foot, my fault. I just did that to get the, uh, the Z offset right. I know I wanted adhesion for this print, but it's not a bad cube at all. It's got actually pretty sharp corners too. So got the crown on top, the 3D looks nice, the PL looks nice, there's all overhangs there but it's actually a pretty sharp looking cube. I am noticing what I want to call some sort of like wall artifacts, uh, but I've done no calibration on this, no E-step calibration. Uh, we just did a live Z off, so that was it. So for a first print, for doing absolutely nothing, not bad. I commend it. Now let's kill it. Okay, what does this tell me? It tells me the time that it took, which is 30 minutes and 40 seconds. That counts the preheating time and all that other uh, included stuff. So, let's turn this off. Pop the SD card out of the front. And oh, SD card comes out. Oh, uh, no, this is textured. This is actually, the bed's actually really, really nice. Um, the bed is kind of what I like the most about this. Reminds me of the black textured PEI, and this feeling of texture is similar to that one. Actually, the quiddy's a little different, but this usually, for whatever reason, it here's the best for me. Uh, so we're going to get our Clipper firmware image back onto this SD card. So, you know, I was talking to Hean recently about giveaways and that kind of thing. I have a bunch of Ender 3 Pros, uh, my own. That it's just, I don't know if you noticed, the background is a little different, the KLP is here, I moved things around. Those Ender 3s have kind of outlived their space. I wanted to give this away, I wanted to give those away, I wanted to give the Ender 3 V3 SE away. I was gonna give this KLP one away too, but I really like it. Um, the problem is, the cost of shipping, it's, it's a nightmare. And I have to only do it US space, which I kind of feel bad about. Uh, so I want to do more, I'm just broke. I want to do more giveaways, but it's like $35 to ship it, plus the box, plus the wrapping and stuff like that. It's not easy. Um, but yeah, I want to do it. The plan will be to give this away. Ultimately, that's the, uh, 
That's the answer, right? Okay, so let us get all... Let's get on the same page here. I have the USB drive connected, which is right here. And uh, Jack from earlier was telling me, I said there was no manual for this. He said, check the USB drive. He's right, look, here's a user manual. Unboxing and installation. I wish they would have told me I would have watched them instead of doing the stream. Just kidding. All right, so you, in general, you have to get rid of a US, everything on your USB drive in order to flash it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cut this. I'm just gonna add it to JJ Maker. I'm never making a video for this, I don't think, but you never know. All right, now we're just, just for pros posterity sake, I am copying everything off the SD card that was there and moving it to a different folder. I just don't want to lose everything, because I'm going to delete it right now so I can add the Clipper firmware file, and then I can try and flash this. Now, what I did read right here was um, copy the file dot bin to an SD card and to just restart it with that. So I don't think I have, there's any naming convention that I need. Like, you know, with the Aquilas or the Enders, there's names you can use, can't use. The Aquila, you have to nest the firmware file uh, into a different folder. So I don't think I have to do that. I think I could simply get this clipper.bin file, paste it in here, and I think I'm good to go, All right? As long as it ends in .bin. So we're gonna eject this. have the SD card with the clipper on it. It's very likely gonna brick our printer. I get a feeling, I don't know what I'm doing. So, JG Maker ha does offer firmwares on their website though. So we can always just use that. Here we go. Oh, huh. did forget something, no I didn't. Oh, I forgot something. So yeah, no, the T500 would never be given away for a few reasons. One, oh, that beeping can't be good. Maybe that means it took Okay. You know what I didn't consider? Is there any USB ports on this? How am I gonna connect? I gotta use that old school one? I ain't not go. Yeah, the T500 is too heavy. That would cost me like $4,000 a ship, not really. All right, so there's only... Um, what kind of SD card error? Yes, I, I don't know if this worked or not. I don't think it did. I'm able to still use the screen, uh, which I shouldn't be able to. Let's turn this off. All right, I'm gonna give this one more shot. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna call it. Because I just have a feeling the way to flash this is gonna be, uh, it is just a proper way to flash this that I don't know how to do. And we're gonna have to research it. JG Maker, hello. JG Maker. There was a point uh, where you could download different products from them or firmwares and stuff like this. That should tell me, theoretically, how to flash this. But I'm not really sure, there we go. So source code firmware, it doesn't really tell me how to flash it. just tells me where the firmware is. I wish it told me somewhere like, hey, you have to put it in moving maintenance, if anyone see. All right, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to get this. And that's for the screen, just like a normal kilo, a kilo would be. Yeah, I don't know 100% how to flash this, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to ask them again. Do I have to call it Robin Pro 35.bin? I don't think so. I shouldn't have to. Anything in here that tells us? 
your readme file. Download this readme. Actually, hold on. Hold on, I already have this. Sorry. Certainly not what everyone wanted to watch, but I was hoping we were going to get this done. I don't think we will. Unless this tells me how to do it. I guess I'm not sure if we're flashing it properly. How to config. I need how to flash. On the board, type the one out just like this. The full config. Oh, Robinano. Did we get the right one? Config, open the file. Read the show for easy number, communicate. I don't see it here. I don't see it here. Probably gonna have to do some more research on this. I'm gonna try it one more time. And then we're gonna call it. Sorry. Sorry I failed you all. I, mean, I literally did no actual research on this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if any sponsor is going to actually want to work with me or do stuff like that for giveaways. It would be really nice, but I don't really reach out to people like that. I don't know. I just feel weird doing it. Uh, but maybe it'd be cool. I mean, just filament giveaways would be sick. You know, if we did an i3D Max one or King Rune, yeah, whatever. We'll find some other. Uh, what's the Ace Anity? That was a cool company, and they sent me a few reels, and I really liked it. And then they forgot to send me more. All right, so I definitely don't think this is uh, this is fit properly for this. So I can take it out. I should I can still home. The menu didn't go crazy or anything. Yeah, so I get home. All right, so Marlin works. We know that Clipper not working yet. We're gonna try and get it to work. We'll be updating this on the Discord, and maybe I'll do a short like YouTube, literally a YouTube short in this, if I can get Clipper onto this thing, which is just gonna take me fooling around, fussing about with it. You don't want to watch that. You think I should rename it Robin Pro Dot Bin? All right. I mean, it told me to do that, right? I should just listen to what it said. All right. Let's try it. <clears throat> this I'm surprised this camera right now is still going. I think it's the battery's dead. I mean, obviously it's not, but all right. Webcam. Rather, screenshot. All right, what was it? Robin Pro, Robin underscore Pro 35 dot bin. Just like that, right? Capital R. Robin Pro 35. Stop it. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Hey. We're, you're catching the tail end of the stream. We're trying to flash clipper onto this JG Maker R1. We're getting some help. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's very it's very quiet. We did a print just a second ago and it was actually pretty quick, pretty fast, but very quiet. So let's try and flash this. Okay. All right, the screen is intact. Not a good sign. Probably means it didn't go. So, <clears throat> Ian, you missed the part. Yeah, we created the image based off of this. We created an image based off the MKS Robin Pro, although this had been Robin Nano, right? In the Marlin a second ago? Let's let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. That said Robin Nano. To configure it for Marlin, right? And we configured it for a pro. That's what it that's what the So I looked in the Marlin file here. <clears throat> and the outsource was uh, Robin Pro, which is 
the board I found and used. However, in this README, it said how to configure, just like this, default environment, MKS Robin Nano 35. So maybe it's the Robin Nano 35. So Robin Nano 35 might be 3.x, right? Let's CM 32F4. No, it's not this because we have a 32F103. So this is not, this can't be it. This can't be it. I gotta get my my mouse back in here. Uh, nano, no other nanos, right? Nano V1? SCMF 103, 28 KIB. So this is all the same thing. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling they're all just flashed the same way. So I don't think we could have done anything much, much different. Yeah, this is STM F407. That's not what we have. We have a 103. Yeah, I just think, I just think I'm doing something wrong. We'll figure it out though. F103 and just you start PB11, PB10. We use, we did 28, 28 KIB. Uh, well, there is this. I'm using Kia, which is a little different. I'm not using the straight make menu config, make flash commands. Hmm. So let's do that. Are you all still with me? I think my burrito's here. Let's do this real quick, and then we're done. I can't do this anymore. Okay, uh, we're gonna go back into Kia. I'm gonna, instead of running how Kia does it, we're gonna try this. Let's make flash, make menu config, so let's try that. So I'm using, I talked about this earlier, but I'm using my uh, Innovata Quadro as a host device. It's not plugged in, obviously, but I'm just using it to create a firmware image because we can do that. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, make menu config. All right, so here we go. We're already set up. Flash an image. This is exactly how I want it. 32, F103. Uh, bootloader 28 KIB, and it was USART 3, PB11, PB10. So after make, right? After that, we're going to run the following command. Copy that. Paste it. See if it does anything. No such file directory. Put that one out. Update mks.py. Yeah, that's just, I don't think that file actually exists on here. Up in Robin Nano 35. Yeah, I just. Oh, did it do something now? Oh, did I just accidentally copy? All right, so it looks like it did it. Let's close this down. Let's use WinSCP so we can actually find that file. out where there it is I don't know I don't know I don't know if I trust this but we're gonna try plug this in and my burrito I believe is here Gonna run upstairs. 
grab that burrito. Then we're going to, all right, so here it is. Get rid of this, it lowercase the robin again, by the way. 3D printing, I copied it right here. We're gonna copy and paste this. All right, so that's the file it asks us to get, the way it asks us to get it. Get rid of that. Clipper, clipper. All right, I'm gonna hit power. Step away for three seconds. Don't do anything I wouldn't do without me. All right, I'm coming back down. How did the screen look? Is it all jumbled? No, the screen is intact. So, so it makes me think we just don't know what the heck we're doing. Not right. There could be a ton of different things. Yeah, we burned the stream. No, you don't burn the stream down. All right, so let's see. Tool. Home. Home. Yeah, I mean, the screen's working, so that's so. Yeah, we're just not doing it right. We're not doing something right. That's fine. Um, Lynn needs to print a bunch of hollow printer mock-ups so there can be a table flip. People keep saying that. Uh, one of the guys I work with wants me to start smashing all the models I, I print, but. All right, so we're not doing something right. We're gonna find out how to get Clipper onto this. It was just a really quick thing we were trying to do. Um, by following the Marlin branch through there. But, you know, a little more detection, a little more digging. That being said, the printer printed nice with Marlin, right? It was very quiet, it was very easy. Uh, putting it together was super simple. We had issues with that Y end stop. If you don't know, you can go back to the VOD and check it out. Really not cool, don't like that. We need to lubricate these Z rails, I believe. No, there's a little bit of lub lubrication. So I didn't think there was, nah, I need to lubricate them. There's a little bit at the bottoms, but we still need to lubricate the tops. Uh, so dual Z driven, dual Z motor, timing belt, filament runout sensor, direct extruder, pretty silent, you know, quiet. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's almost there. I wish we could flash clipper onto this. That would really make this thing take it to the next level. And you can get a $150, $160 printer, goes together well, that can probably move pretty fast. Really nice PEI bed that can use clipper with a bed probe. So um, that's really the next level for this. That's where I see this printer going. You just got to get it there. So. It's gonna take some time. I'm gonna do some research. Everyone else do research. We'll talk in the Discord. We'll talk in the YouTube comments. Uh, I gotta go eat this burrito. Yo, I'm gonna post it in the Discord. You're gonna love this burrito, it's amazing. Guacamole, rice, french fries, chicken. It's just amazing. So thank you everyone who stopped by. If you're watching this on a rerun, I apologize. Uh, but no, thank you everyone who stopped by. Thank you everyone for supporting. New video for the King Room coming out very soon. I'm going to try and finish recording it. I was going to do it tonight, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, sometime soon, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it was $250 on the website, then it's like a $100 off coupon. So it's like $150 or $160 or something like that. Um, problem is, at that price range, you're competing with the Ender 3 V3 SE, Auto Z Offset, Conflash Clipper, like all those different things. So it's not easy. Tough road to hoe for this 3D printer, um, but we'll see if we can do it. You know, if this can run Clipper effectively, that's a big boon. And then maybe down the line, we'll have a giveaway 3D printer, JG Maker. I think only Jimmy's DIY is the only one that can win because he literally lives in the same state I live in, so I can send it right to him. I'm joking. Jimmy's DIY is not going to be the one that wins, maybe. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll have a giveaway. I want to give this, I want to see this find a good home, especially after we clipperize it. The Ender 3 V3 SE needs to find a good home. We have a lot of things going on, so. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out. This video is coming soon. End your three videos coming soon. Nevermore Micro V4 videos coming soon. Everyone's getting enclosed 3D printers. This is not one of them, but enclosed 3D printers are common now. Printing ABS is common now. You need to filter it. So that's all. Uh, yeah, really good deal, and So nice printer. Company's been great with me. Few emails back and forth. They were, you know, terrific to work with so far. I'm gonna debrief them on some of the stuff I saw on the printer that I didn't like, the stand stop sensors.
like that. We'll see what they say. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm sure I'm going to speak with you in like 20 minutes from now on the Discord as I eat my burrito. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, keep on printing. I guess it's a stream. I don't need to do that sign off. So I am going to, he and I am going to put something over here that I'm constantly looking at. And eventually you'll find out what it is. But tonight's not that night. All right. Thank you, everyone. Mwah. Kisses. Good night. Happy holidays. See you next time. Oh, my mouse.